Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Today we're going to be looking at the Wind Force Hydro Bow. Now the Wind Force Hydro Bow is um without lack I mean, without a better word, uh, it's just it's just a very sought after bow. Um, for years, I mean decades even, uh, the Wind Force Hydro Bow has been the dream of many Amazons. Uh, quite a large number of Amazons have uh, specifically tried to get their hands on a Wind Force Hydro Bow and failed. A lot of the times they would be forced to use um, an inferior option, like for instance the Buriza do Canyon, um, which would be you know their go-to bow until they managed to get themselves a Wind Force. Uh, why is the Wind Force such a good bow, and uh, and why is it so sought after, and why is it still actually a good bow to use, even in light of many other rune words like faith and uh, and wrath and uh, ice and so forth and so on that uh, that compete against Wind Force. Uh, we're going to go over that together today. So the first thing we're going to look at is the stats of the bow. Uh, because this is an elite bow, it's not going to be upgradable. Uh, it, it is socketable, socketable though, and you can put a rune in it. Uh, so right off the bat here, we have 35 to 547 damage. And this is the highest that this bow can possibly get uh, because of its increase by character level. Um, my particular character here is level 99. So if you are level 99, this is the damage that you're going to see. Uh, we have a 20% increased attack speed on this bow, which does make it relatively fast. And um, that is important because uh, Hydra Bows tend to be on the slower side. Uh, we have 167 dexterity requirement and 134 strength, which makes this a ridiculously difficult bow to equip. Um, it's not necessarily that either of those stats are so high that they are unreachable, but it's that it requires both of those stats to be the, that high. 167 and 134 strength is a lot when you combine it together in total number. Uh, we also have a level requirement of 73, which means this bow is a relatively high level bow in general. And uh, and you're going to have a hard time putting this on any time earlier than, you know, level 73. Um, so if you're building a character around Hydro Bow, the Wind Force Hydro Bow, you're going to have to come up with other options um, to use in the meantime as you level up, unless you're just getting a G-Rush. Now, this bow does have a 250% enhanced damage on it um, that is static. It does not change, uh, which means that you will always find it with 250% enhanced. Uh, we also have a increase to damage based on character level of uh, plus 3.125 per character level. Now that means that when you find this particular bow, um, sorry, if, if, if when you put this bow on at level 73, that is going to be 73 times 3.125, uh, which is going to be plus 228 on the, the exact point that you can equip this bow. Um, and then at level 99, it goes to 309. So we have uh, we have a, a kind of a, a big variance there of about, um, what is it, about 80 points, 80 to 90 points of max damage. Um, it also has a uh, mana steal on it that varies between 6 to 8%. So only a 2% variance on the mana steal, which isn't bad. And uh, if you did find an 8%, um, that's actually the only thing that varies on this bow, and uh, you would have the highest damage possible. Uh, we also have knockback built into this bow, which is amazing. That means you don't have to apply knockback anywhere else. Uh, knockback is absolutely crucial for bow class characters because they want to keep the monsters away from them. As a melee character, you don't want knockback, but as a bow character you do uh, it has plus 10 to strength and plus 5 to dexterity which is kind of almost mocking considering you have to have so much to put this on but i suppose um it's nice to have it on there anyway uh, we also have a heal stamina plus 30 percent which uh, at level 73 you shouldn't have any issues with stamina but after you put this bow on you're certainly not going to have any issues anymore with heal stamina plus 30 percent um, now, as for the socket, uh, you can put a lot of things in this particular bow. Um, you can shale it. Um, you could put a 15% uh, 30 gem in there. You could put um, a crushing blow rune. Um, you could put all sorts of things in the, uh, in the Hydra bow to make it uh, more versatile to what you're specifically trying to do. If I was an elemental Am Amazon, by the way, who is... Um, using Freezing Arrow or Exploding Arrow, I would probably go with a Shale Rune. If I was a Physical Damage Boson, I would probably go with something else. Um, and, and, and that's really what it comes down to, is, um, is what kind of bow Amazon am I? Now, the Hydra Bow, the Wind Force Hydra Bow, has been sought after for a very long time. And it has seen... 
um, I want to say uh, changes over the years. Um, it has also um, seen its fierce competition um, in uh, in various sources as well. So, I mean, you can, uh, for instance, um, you can use a faith bow these days. Now, a faith bow has fanaticism on it, and fanaticism is an amazing aura. And um, being able to use fanaticism on an Amazon is one of the reasons why Wind Force kind of lost its popularity. However, um, if you were to get yourself a Wind Force and a Faith Bow and put the Wind Force on yourself and the Faith Bow on your Bow Girl, you can actually get the benefit of the fanaticism and still use the massive damage of Wind, wind Force Hydro Bow. And um, when I say massive amount of damage, I really mean a massive amount of damage. Um, as you can see here, I have 395 to 3053 damage right now. And then when you combine the fact that I have the uh, passive critical strike, which gives me a chance to do double damage, and I could pretty much get that high enough where I'm doing double damage the majority of the time, I'm rocking a pretty nice like 800 to 6,000 100 damage in my physical damage before anything else comes into play and then when i tag on other skills like for instance um if i'm using uh let's, let's do uh let's do strafe strafe has a bonus of 130 percent um unfortunately though it also penalizes me which is, which is not as cool a lot of uh, amazon's skills penalize you for damage i'm trying to think of one that uh, amazon has that actually does apply the extra damage as opposed to penalizing you for the damage and um, there's not a lot unfortunately uh amazon is one of those characters where they're just like uh, they're like oh yeah you want a multi-shot well 75 percent weapon damage oh yeah well you want to strafe 75 percent weapon damage uh oh yeah you want a guided arrow well we're not going to give you that much up above and uh and, and unfortunately this is not a freezing arrow amazon or a exploding arrow amazon um, now, this bow actually could be used fairly well with uh, Cold Arrow, by the way, which is, um, which Cold Arrow actually does increase your damage um, through converting it into physical damage, uh, or elemental damage, rather. Um, and they actually talked about beefing these up um, in the 2.4 patch notes. I'm actually kind of excited to see if they convert these properly they, they uh, fix these properly because um, it could be quite useful with really high damage bows like this because as a Amazon using this since it's just simply converting your physical damage into elemental damage um, you definitely want to have as high of a physical damage as possible while you're using them um, they don't actually splash though which is not really the greatest Now, the Wind Force Hydra Bow can also be used on mercenaries. Um, so if you did have one of these, uh, maybe you found one as a, you know, a specific uh, character that doesn't use Wind Force Hydra Bows. But maybe you have, haven't have had good luck finding uh, good equipment for your mercenary. Um, or you don't necessarily need a specific, uh, you know, aura like Insight or something like that. Well, um, you know, keep in mind that perhaps you could give it to your mercenary. Let your mercenary be OP. Um, it's certainly not a bad bow for a mercenary. It's one of the best bows that you can possibly use in the game. And uh, putting it on a mercenary is certainly going to give your mercenary a lot of damage um, and uh, make her quite useful in killing things. And then you can tag those along with some other nice pieces of equipment, maybe an Andariel's Visage, and uh, maybe give her a nice armor like a Duress or uh, something like that. I'm not sure if I have a Duress laying around... I do not. Um, you could also give her a treachery um, to increase her attack speed, uh, things like that. Uh, tr increasing her attack speed would actually be pretty nice with this particular bow because, like I said, it's it's not um, the fastest bow class to begin with, uh, but it does have 20% increased. And then increasing it a little bit further with the Andariel's Visage and the treachery would actually make her have some pretty incredible kill speed. Um... There's really not a lot more to talk about with Wind Force Bow, except for maybe its weaknesses. Um, it doesn't give you plus to skills. Um, it doesn't give you, you know, a, a bonus to, um, you know, Amazon bow specific skills or anything like that. Um, and this can be a downside if you're specifically a build that is highly skill based. Um, it does give you a really large amount of mana steal, though. 8% um, mana steal combined with the extremely high physical damage on this bow means you probably won't be able to won't have to worry about mana when you're using this bow. Um, 
even if you're an elemental damage slot, believe it or not. Um, so if you're firing freezing arrow or exploding arrow, uh, the physical damage that you do will be extremely high, and uh, and the physical damage that you do will will leech back a lot of mana with this particular bow, and uh, and that is definitely a big plus. There's really not a lot much more to say about Wind Force Hydra Bow. Um, it does have stiff competition, but it is still an amazing bow. And if you find one, congratulations. Um, we also have uh, to look and see where you can find this bow. So that's a good idea. Let's go take a look at that, shall we? So uh, Wind Force, bosses, 150% magic find. And uh, we're going to look at all of them. So it looks like here that the probability of a wind force dropping from Bale in Hell is 1 in 19,534. <laughs> and uh, Nilothak has a, uh, a rather terrible chance at dropping this. Um, there are also the Putrid Defilers in Worldstone Keep, uh, levels 1 through 3. Um, they have a chance of dropping wind force. Um, I've told people this before. The, um, the Fetid Defilers, the Rancid Defilers, the Rank Defilers in Worldstone Keep... For some reason, they are extremely high-level monsters, and they can drop some of the highest-level items in the game. And I do not know why specifically. If you've never seen them before, um, let's go take a look at them, shall we? Because if you're hunting for a Wind Force bow, um, you're probably going to be farming Bale, because Bale is one of the few monsters in the game that can drop the item. But on the way to Bale, as you're teleporting, if you see the specific monsters that I'm going to show you, um, I want you to stop and kill them. Uh, because they are the monsters that have a pretty decent chance to give you uh, this particular bow. And uh, might as well see the Wind Force in action, shall we? So that's uh, that's with Strafe, and I don't even have... Um, cannot be frozen on this character. Why am I not wearing a ring? I'm not wearing any rings, am I? No, I'm not wearing any rings at all. Because I'm the smartest person in the world. The smartest person in the world! You know what? Let's go grab a, uh, a sorceress. It'll be easier, and uh, that way we can just uh, we can just run along or teleport along rather. Uh, da -da -da -da. This sorceress can't go to hell difficulty. I never did edit her in properly, unfortunately. Unfortunate lamb. We'll go to Nightmare Difficulty so I can uh, be easy on myself. But it, they're the same monsters in both difficulty settings, so it's not like it really matters. I just want you to see what they look like, specifically, because they are rather odd monsters. Of course, I gotta get glooms everywhere I go, huh? Gloomy, gloomy, glooms. Gloomy, 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 glooms. All the gloomy, glooms. There's a gloomy, gloom, 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 glooms. All of the glooms. Who don't like the glooms? Coming at you with the big old glooms. Oh, God, champions. Now, I don't think they're actually always in Worldstone Keep. Uh, that's the interesting thing about them, is that they're only sometimes in Worldstone Keep. And um, with my luck, I probably won't find them. All right, let's do another game. Um, I'm just going to pause it, and I'll be right back once I've got uh, my eyes on them, shall I? All right, so here they are. Um, let me get rid of the non-putrid defilers. So these are the um, the rancher defilers, the putrid defilers, etc. And what they do is they infect the other corpses so that when they die, um, they spawn forth these little anguish worms. Um, these defilers, especially when you find them in elite form and champion form, are very important to kill as a magic find character because they have a chance of dropping every item in the game. Um, there is, l I think, there is literally nothing that they cannot drop. Um, and it is a rather rare probability because they have the ability to drop everything. Um, but it is important to note that as you're teleporting through, 
um, a world stone keep to uh, Throne of Destruction. If you do happen to come across a rather large concentration of future defilers, and you're on a magic find character who is, uh, you know, trying to find items, um, they can drop pretty much every item in the Galant game, including Wind Force Hydro Bow. Um, you know, especially if you're hunting specifically for Wind Force Hydro Bow, because Wind Force Hydro Bow does not have a lot of monsters that it will actually drop the item. And uh, let's go over really quickly what super uniques can possibly drop this item. And uh, it's a really short list, like extremely short list. So I'm going to go over it real quick. Uh, Frozenstein, Pindleskin, and Hell Difficulty. They're all Hell Difficulty, by the way. Frozenstein, Pindleskin, Snap Chip, Shatter, Thresh Socket, Akmel, the Cursed, Bartek, the Bloody, Colenzo, the Annihilator, List of the Tormentor, Ventar, the Unholy, Neolithak, Sharp Tooth, Slayer, and Doc Farron. In that order. So Doc Farron being the worst and Frozenstein being the best. Although Frozenstein, Pindleskin, and Snapchip Chatter, Chatter are actually uh, all tied for the same probability to drop a Wind Force Hydro Bow. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my video. And um, keep watching.